Recruit Tech. John Vlastalika here. I'm very excited to get to spend some time with you. We're going to talk about how to become a talent advisor and strategic partner to hiring managers. So what I want to share with you today is some of the work that uh, my team and I have put together after working with hundreds of organizations in about 20 countries, mostly doing training and consulting work. Uh, a lot of it focused on elevating the role of the recruiter from more of a traditional kind of recruiter, almost with an order taker mentality, you know, the hiring manager is always right, changing that to something more like a talent advisor. I spent about half my career on the corporate side. I was the head of technology recruiting at Amazon and the head of recruiting at Expedia, two companies based here in Seattle where I'm located. And as you can see from this uh, list of logos here, we got to work with some amazing companies as a consultant through my company recruiting toolbox. So let's dive into the content. Uh, one of the things I wanted to start with was just a general setup, which is what do hiring managers want most? When you think about hiring managers and you think about the recruiting process through their lens, I would argue it's not compliance, it's not consistency, it's probably not even cost savings. What most hiring managers want from the recruiting process is speed and quality. And so one of the opportunities we have, of course, is we need to leverage our skills as talent advisors to help them get what they want, not just be that order taker, but find ways to deliver speed and quality. Now, I only have 20 minutes today. I'm not gonna be able to share you know, everything that's in our traditional talent advisor training with you, and I'm not gonna be able to dig into speed and quality in a lot of detail, but I wanna make sure this is practical for you. I am gonna focus on speed today. And I believe speed is the love language of hiring managers. And what do I mean by that? I mean by that my Croatian grandmother, her love language was food. That's how she showed love. That's how she received love. That was her language to show us that she loved, you know, her grandchildren, you know, me and my sister. Um, but speed is the love language of hiring managers. And it turns out you need speed to get quality. These are very connected ideas. You can't have a slow process and expect to close world-class talent. World-class talent has a lot of options, a lot of options. So we're gonna talk about three big things today. We're gonna to talk about how do we engage hiring managers? So specifically, what are some things we can do to get hiring managers more involved in the process to see recruiting as kind of part of their day job? How do we work with unrealistic hiring managers to get them a little more realistic, which is a big challenge for a lot of us? And then how do we influence the profiles and process? How do we get hiring managers to really understand that they have a critical role to play in getting what they want, which is speed? So let's start off by talking about engagement. And I'll tell you for years, for years, I used to, I'm always seeking ways to get more leverage. How do I get this hiring manager to do something that, that is really in their own best interest? But a lot of times I was framing it around what I needed. I was framing it around, you know, please do this new process, please respond faster, please do all these things. I would set up, you know, service level agreements. I would talk about how critical it is that the hiring manager and I were, you know, a strong partnership and that's all good. I mean, that's fine. But honestly, if you're trying to influence someone, you need to show how what you're asking them to do impacts what they care about most. And so one of the ways to do that is to reframe the conversation from, you know, hey, please do this because you and I will be a better partner. Please do this because we'll be able to get what we want out of our process. And instead, instead frame it around the fact that top talent actually demands engaged hiring managers. You're not doing this just as a favor for me in recruiting. I would love it if that was one of the reasons, but that's not the primary reason. The primary reason you're doing this is because top talent goes to the most engaged hiring leaders. If you wanna get the best of the best, they expect a hiring manager who's very involved in the recruiting process. They are a magnet for talent because they are so engaged, they lean in. They see recruiting as part of their day job. They don't see it as this favor that lives out here that they're doing for me, John, the recruiter. They see it as part of their day job. And then this is really harsh to say, but the leftovers, the talent that's not very good, those go to the hiring managers that are passive, that complain, my recruiter sucks, I'm not seeing enough resumes. Those are the hiring managers that do not get the top talent. And of course we want our hiring managers to get top talent. So step one to engage them is help them understand the kind of talent they're going after, where they're aiming, the kind of talent they're aiming for expects them to be engaged. And if you have stories in your organization of candidates that you were able to close, not because you were the highest paying, not because you had the most attractive employer brand, but because the hiring manager was so engaged in attracting, sourcing, interviewing, selecting, and closing that talent, that is a really powerful narrative, a really powerful, powerful uh, story for you to share. 
Now, the second thing I want to talk about is hiring managers who are unrealistic. And I put this up here with a little smiley face because I actually think hiring managers are required by law, um, all laws to be unrealistic. And I put a list of some things I'm sure you've heard some of the hiring managers you've worked with say, you know, I need someone in seven days, or I want to include way too many people on the interview team, or I need perfection. This candidate has to have all 10 out of 10 on these things. And we hear these things from hiring managers and I get it. I get it. I don't want to be the recruiter that tells them to lower their standards. I'm not saying, you know, hire someone who's not good, of course, but they need to be realistic. We, we need to bring some insights into what's really going on in the marketplace. We need to educate the hiring managers who are unrealistic to make them more realistic because when you're unrealistic, your rec, your job stays open for a long time. There's a guy in my team named Matt and he is awesome. And he worked at a company called KPMG and he talked about a hiring manager he worked with that had a, a job that was open for a year and they sang happy birthday <laughs> to the wreck. <laughs> the wreck had a birthday because it was open for a full year. And most of that was because of engagement issues and being unrealistic. So how do we deal with unrealistic hiring managers? One of the ways we can deal with them is to leverage a conversation that's around educating them around trade-offs. There are trade-offs. If I'm working with an unrealistic hiring manager, I tend to frame things up around speed, cost, and quality. And you can use this tool as a way to have a conversation with your hiring managers as well. And this is the way I typically talk about this. This is the way I kind of dig into it. I say, listen, we're working with three variables here. We have speed, which is kind of time to fill, how long it's gonna to take to fill this role. We have cost, which is kind of the salary you're willing to pay. And then we have quality, which is whether or not you get a perfect candidate profile match. When hiring managers are being unrealistic, it's really helpful for you to push back a bit, but do it in a way that's more educational. You know, listen, if you wanna get speed, if you want someone really fast, who's really, really cheap, they're probably not gonna be the best quality talent, right? And if you want someone really, really cheap, who's really, really good, it's gonna take us a long time. And if you want speed and quality, if you want 10 out of 10 of everything you're looking for and you want it really fast, you're gonna probably have to pay more than you wanna pay. And so I, again, I'm not trying to get them to lower their standards. When I talk about quality here, I'm not talking about hiring someone that's not good. What I am talking about is how do you talk to hiring managers around this notion of perfection? You know, I need all 10 out of 10. And this is where we might say, hey, I know you want 12 years of experience, but I can get speed and I can get the, the candidate for that cost if you're willing to go down to eight years of experience. Still someone who's capable, still someone who knows the skills, they just may not have 12, they might have eight because of the realities in our marketplace. We don't see a lot of candidates with 12 years of experience. And if we do, they cost a heck of a lot more than what you're willing to pay. So that's a really powerful conversational tool. I learned this when I was very young as a corporate recruiter working in telecommunications and uh, actually one of the IT project managers kind of walked me through how he used this in project management. And immediately he and I saw an application for this in recruiting as well. The next thing I wanna to talk to you a little bit about is um, this opportunity to get, to get calibrated, to get aligned with the hiring manager very early. One of the biggest problems I see in recruiting is you know, misalignment. In fact, I have the saying, misalignment is the root of all evil in recruiting. Misalignment is the root of all evil. And so we have an opportunity to make sure that we are very calibrated, very aligned, very in sync. We're on the same page with the hiring manager around what she's looking for. And I wanted to share with you um, a little bit of a, a, a way of thinking about this, a framework of thinking about the impact of this. And I want to use as an example, you know, a car manufacturing company. So imagine that a manufacturing company is, uh, imagine you're, you know, you're working inside the manufacturing plant and, you know, a car is going down the manufacturing line and someone notices a problem with the braking system. If you fix that problem while it's on the line, before it leaves the plant, before it gets out into the world, that costs you one. But if you don't catch it there and it gets out to the car dealerships, it's gonna cost you 10X more to deal with that braking problem because now you're gonna figure out how to repair all of those things and you know maybe bring them back to the factory, whatever you have to do, it's gonna cost a lot. And if those cars leave the dealership and make it into consumers, if you and I are buying these cars with a braking problem, the cost is 10X more than that. It's 100 more than if you would have dealt with it when it's in the factory because now they're all distributed out into the world, there's bad press, there's maybe you know scary accidents happening because of this braking system. The same thing, although light, not light and death oriented, 
But the same thing kind of applies in recruitment as well. If I don't get aligned with a hiring manager very, very early in the process, I run the risk. I run the risk of having a bunch of time invested in sourcing, a bunch of candidates presented, candidates coming on site, candidates making to the final interview that were not what, what she and I were looking for. We were not aligned. And so one of the opportunities I have is to get aligned very early. And in that first kickoff strategy meeting, if you can bring some calibration profiles, some LinkedIn profiles, some resumes, CVs of people, not necessarily that are, that are available, but just to kind of help the hiring manager critique some real life candidates and talk about what she likes or doesn't like in a particular candidate, that speeds up this kind of new metric I've created called time to alignment. It speeds up the time um, between, you know, when you and I as the hiring manager are aligned. The second place to get really aligned, of course, is to participate in candidate feedback discussions. So if a hiring manager or you are leading a conversation after an interviewing day and you've got three candidates that came in on a Thursday and late in the day Thursday, you're talking about the pros and cons of each candidate, this is a really good time for you to be there, to listen. Hopefully more than just listening, you're facilitating, but to listen because this is often where you learn the most about the job because you're learning about it in the context of real candidates, not a job description. Your job descriptions are bad. I promise you they're bad because everyone's job descriptions are bad. They do not really capture the work and the requirements effectively. So this is a great place to go to get that information. I wanna highlight the, the third thing, which is really focusing on, on process and getting managers more engaged in the process. And, and one of the, the kind of most valuable skills you can develop as a recruiter, especially if you wanna be a talent advisor, is to be really good at influencing. And one of the keys to influencing is this concept of framing. How do you frame something up so that it matters to the person you're trying to influence? You're not just pushing a process. You're not just, hi, I'm here from HR. Here's our new process you have to follow. I'm gonna send out an email and tell you this new step by step by step. The, 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 so when you're selling it, when, when you're really trying to sell someone on an idea, you have to be able to frame it around what they care about. And so what do hiring managers care most about? Well, we've talked about it in this context, speed. And so if I am talking to a hiring manager about speed, if I could be the recruiter that could actually help my hiring managers go faster, oh my gosh, I am winning. I am winning. It is rare for anyone from the HR talent recruiting space to come into a hiring manager and help them go faster. We usually slow things down. Here's more forms. I need you to log into our ATS. I need you to send me this stuff. You have to fill this request. You have to wait for these approvals. You know, we're always talking about things that sound like they're slow. So I can be an absolute hero, hero if I can go to a hiring manager and tell him or her how to go faster. So this is the way I typically do that, is I want them to understand the role they play in getting speed. So I'm not pushing a process. What I'm doing is I'm highlighting for them, you wanna go faster, I can help you go faster. And this is the way I typically do it. I say, hey, typical time to accept or time to start for this kind of role is 90 days. And if we were to break down those 90 days into major steps, you know, kind of the, the getting alignment phase and then the sourcing phase and the interviewing and selection phase and the offer phase and the accept phase, here's how long it takes in each one of those major steps. Those 90 days, you know, 10 days here, 15 days here, 20 days here, et cetera. And then I ask this really powerful question. Hiring manager, would you be interested in hearing what some of the other hiring managers I work with who fill very similar roles some of the things that they do differently to actually shave those 90 days down to 70 days. They actually fill these kinds of roles 20 days faster. I have some experience with these other groups. We're doing things a little differently than the way you and I have been doing them. Would you like to hear some of the things you and I can do to go 20 days faster? Now you are speaking my love language if you're telling me this as a recruiter and I'm a hiring manager because you're talking about going faster. And so it is very, very likely the answer is gonna be Yes, of course, of course I would like to know how to go 20 days faster. And this is your opportunity. By asking it as a question, you are putting the hiring manager in a position to ask for your help, to ask for your guidance, for you to be a talent advisor. In fact, by asking it as a question, not just saying here's how to go faster, but would you like to hear, you're setting up the relationship so it's a little more peer to peer. So it's a little more peer to peer. And this is where you get the opportunity, I think, for you to, to kind of connect with a hiring manager as a subject matter expert, to say, I actually know how to get speed, quality, diversity, cost, you know, whatever your goals are. In this case, we're talking about speed. I know how to go faster. Would you be interested in hearing some of that? And then what you follow up with, of course, is, well, here's some things you and I can do. Here's what some of those hiring managers are doing differently. Here's some of the strategies, the way they're engaged in sourcing, screening, interviewing, selecting, closing. This is the role that they're playing in that. 
And these are some of the things you can be doing to go faster. When I think about the hiring managers I've worked with in my career who are amazing, who actually get speed and quality and diversity, they do lots of lots of interesting things. And I want to hit you with four things really quick, four, four things, four things really quick. One of our um, clients actually sets up coffee chat goals. And I know when we're virtual, this is a little odd, but, but back in the day when we could all sit down at coffee shops, you know, we would sit down and, and say, you know, hey, hiring manager, over the next two weeks, we're gonna be generating some leads, not candidates, some leads. We'd like you to have some initial conversations. So one of our clients in New York City was doing this where hiring managers had goals. They actually gave him a, a gift card to be able to take candidates out for coffee just to have those early, early conversations, more exploratory, more question and answer oriented, not interviews. Uh, some of our clients, uh, and I did this when I was at Amazon, have sourcing sprints where you, you sit down with hiring managers who need to fill you know, seven key roles uh, really, really soon, and everyone sits down, laptops open, and you do real-time sourcing with the hiring managers doing some of the reach out as well. Um, LinkedIn in-mails from hiring managers tend to get a much higher response rate than recruiters, so being able to show hiring managers how they can play a role in attracting talent. And then having preset interview days uh, where you're making same day decisions. So when you're at that kickoff meeting and you're talking to the hiring manager about speed, one of the biggest slowdowns in the whole process is just candidate, uh, or sorry, uh, calendar availability is having you know hiring managers and their interviewers available to interview. So setting up preset interview days, every Tuesday and Friday, we do interviews in the mornings, something like that. So you can schedule candidates quickly, you know hiring managers are available and then set up a same day decision-making process. Those are some examples of things you can do. I really want us to be recruiters, not just process managers. I really want us to be talent advisors, not just taking the order from the hiring manager, but bringing value, giving suggestions on things they can do to get what they want. And I want us to see the hiring managers as our partners, not just as our you know, customers. The customer is not always right. There are many hiring managers who need our guidance, who need you to step up and to play a bigger role. Thank you much for your time. It was a pleasure getting the opportunity to, to chat with you. Uh, have a great rest of your conference. Thank you.